Just like I'm learning guitar after watching my roommate hashtag one man band play it, you can learn how to annotate your books better by watching this video. Stay tuned. I hope you saw my previous video on note taking. In this video, I am going to talk especially about how to take notes. For that, we are going to use Robis and Cotton latest 10th edition. Let's start. Step 1 before taking notes is to identify and mark all the important topics of that chapter. For example, let's take the second chapter. One of the most important parts of this chapter is cell adaptations and we are going to make the notes of the same. Now I will walk you through how I make notes from the textbook. First of all, you need to read and mark all the important definitions, mechanism and example of that given part. Let's start. So the topic is adaptations of cellular growth and differentiation. As you can see, I am using different colors of highlighters to mark the heading, the definition, the examples, etc. It will help me form a better visual memory of all that. Adaptations are reversible changes in size, number, phenotype, metabolic activity or functions of cell in response to changes in their environment. This is obviously a definition and as it is a definition, it is important. So I will mark it with a yellow highlighter. Now after this, they have systemically explained each and every form of adaptation. Before knowing that, we need to know what the form of adaptation are. So, First, we will mark all the main headings, that is the forms of adaptation in this chapter. There is hypertrophy, hyperplasia, atrophy and metaplasia. So these are the four main adaptations that we are going to learn through this chapter. Let's start with hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is an increase in the size of cells that results in an increase in the size of affected organs. This is a definition. If you have carefully looked, I have skipped the starting part. When I am going to write it, I am obviously going to skip all the articles. That is, I won't write the, that, I will just put on an arrow like this. I won't even write this, the, or an, or the. And so, the sentence form will be, increase in size of cell dash results in increase in size of affected organ that is how you can shorten your notes moving ahead hypertrophied organ has no new cells just larger cells the increased size of cell is due to synthesis and assembly of additional intracellular structural components cells capable of division may respond to stress by undergoing both hyperplasia and hypertrophy whereas non-dividing cells myocardial fibers increase the tissue's mass due to hypertrophy in many sites, hypertrophy and hyperplasia may coexist with both contributing to increased organ size. Now in this paragraph, they have tried to differentiate between hypertrophy and hyperplasia and various examples of it. The gist of it is that in hypertrophy, no new cells are formed, just the size of cells is increased, which is basically the definition. So we don't need to write it again. Afterwards, they have explained that the dividing cells can undergo both hyperplasia and hypertrophy. Whereas non-dividing cells can undergo hypertrophy only and they have given the example of myocardial fibers. Lastly, in this paragraph, they have talked about the mechanism of hypertrophy which is due to synthesis and assembly of additional intracellular structural components. So in my notes, I will write hypertrophy is due to synthesis and assembly of additional intracellular structural components which is basically the mechanism of hypertrophy. I can write all these examples and that extra part in maybe hyperplasia or later on. I will keep it in mind for now. Afterwards, they have talked about the types of hypertrophy, which may be physiological or pathological. The physiological hypertrophy is because of increased functional demand or stimulation of hormones and growth factors. They have talked in detail about the pathological hypertrophy. The striated muscle cells in the heart and skeletal muscles have only limited capacity for division and respond to increased metabolic demands mainly by undergoing hypertrophy. The most common stimulus for hypertrophy of skeletal and cardiac muscles is the increase in workload. Now see this, they have printed it in italics and the most common, the least common, the examples, the isolated ones, the exceptions etc. can all be asked as an MCQ. 
so you better mark it and write it in your notes moving ahead in both tissue types muscle cells respond by synthesizing more protein and increasing number of myofilament per cell so they have to said that the muscle cells increase the proteins and myofilaments this in turn increases the amount of force each myocyte can generate and thus the strength and work capacity of the muscle as a whole a classic example of pathological hypertrophy is enlargement of heart in response to pressure overload usually seen either in hypertension or valvular heart diseases now in this they have given the example of heart enlargement because of valvular diseases or hypertension this is something that you should note in your notes the rest of the part is basically them explaining how the muscles grow big and what happens to them afterwards initially cardiac hypertrophy improves function but over time this adaptation fails setting the stage for heart failure and other significant forms of heart problems now in this they have said that the enlargement in heart may lead to heart failure and that is pretty much the gist of the whole paragraph so many lines to explain just the pathological hypertrophy in skeletal muscles and the heart next comes physiological hypertrophy the massive physiologic growth of the uterus during pregnancy is a good example of hormone induced enlargement of organ that results mainly in due to hypertrophy of smooth muscle fibers in this they have given example of physiological hypertrophy that is uterus during pregnancy the stimulus being hormone induced enlargement that is pretty much all that we need to know now we know that the uterus has smooth muscle cells so we don't need to mark and remember that the hypertrophy is of smooth muscle fibers uterine hypertrophy during pregnancy is stimulated by estrogenic hormone signaling through estrogen receptors that eventually result in increasing synthesis of smooth muscle proteins and increasing cell size they have basically said that the uterus increases in size because of estrogen receptors so all you need to mark is the estrogen receptor signaling part the rest of it is the same old story the bulging of muscles of bodybuilders engaged in pumping iron results from enlargement of individual skeletal muscle fibers in response to increased demand as they have said earlier the increase in the muscle fibers is due to the enlargement of individual muscle fibers this is something that we read earlier itself so we don't need to read it again I think this much gave you an idea of how to take notes from Robbins. At the end of the videos, I have attached a few of the images of my own notes which will help you further practice your note taking skills from Robbins. This book is not something to be afraid of. It is something to be enjoyed. Until next time, this is Abhijit. See ya. Happy learning.